up everyone, this is Tony from Shy town Constrictors. In today's episode, I want to talk about ultrasounds. I've had a lot of people ask me this season, uh, what do I do with my ultrasound? How do I use it? What kind of things is it good for? How imperative is it that you have an ultrasound for breeding boas? I've also seen a lot of people be very critical of ultrasounds, saying that you don't need it. If you know enough about boas, you've done enough research, you have enough experience in boa breeding, that you don't need such a piece of equipment to help you with your breeding season, because it's not going to help you be any more effective. Let me be the first one to tell you, they're absolutely right. You don't need it. Um, I bred very successfully for many years before I had an ultrasound, just based on the knowledge, the experience that I gained through that, uh, I did very well. Having the ultrasound is just a nice tool to have to further educate yourself a little bit more. For those of us that want to understand our animals a little bit better during breeding season, know exactly what's going on inside of their bodies, whether or not they're developing follicles, that kind of stuff. If you want to edu educate yourself a little bit more than normal, an ultrasound is a great tool to have. But it is not imperative because you can breed boas very successfully without it. So the model that I've got here is called a Sonoscape A6. It is a veterinary model. I believe one of these will run you between two and three thousand dollars. That may have changed. I've had mine for a few years. If you shop around, you might be able to find a better deal on it by now. Uh, I really don't know. I haven't looked in a while. I've got a lot of females here that are in different stages of their breeding season. Some of them haven't bred at all and their follicles are just starting to uh, begin growing. Others are not growing at all and I've even got a few that are already gravid and we can start to see the beginning of the embryo or even babies inside, which is why I wanted to take the time to show you guys this video and show you all the different things that I can do with it from breeding all the way to already being gravid. So why don't we take a look at a couple of girls. So before we actually get started and get this ultrasound booted up, there's a lot of different ways of ultrasounding. Some people like to take their boas out of their cages, put them in a bathtub or in some kind of a Rubbermaid tub with water and just use the water. I personally don't like to do that because I don't like to bother them. If they're in the middle of developing follicles or if they're already gravid and have babies inside of them potentially, I don't want to actually be picking them up and manhandling them because uh, who knows what kind of things you could mess up inside. So I like to leave them in their cages where they're comfortable and I go online and I buy some ultrasound gel. I usually buy this in bulk. I can get a big box of it for about $20 and it'll last you the whole year depending on how many females you have, depending on uh, how often you ultrasound. It may last more than a year or if you have a lot you may have to buy more than one. But for me it lasts me about eight months to a year or so. Uh, and the big box cost me $20. So, like I said, I like to ultrasound them in their homes where they're comfortable, use some gel, and keep a lot of paper towels handy because it does get messy, especially if the boa tries to run away from you a little bit, uh, and the ultrasound gel is going to get all over the place. So here's a female that I'm really hoping to be able to breed this year. Hopefully we can get her to stay in the camera here. She has not seen a male at all yet this year, so the only stimulation that she's had has been anything that's been naturally occurring in the environment, be... I've been feeding her a little bit less because it's been a little bit cooler and I know that I want to breed her. It's been snowing a lot here in the Chicagoland area, but she has not had any kind of stimulation from a male other than that. So why don't we go ahead and put the ultrasound on her and let's go ahead and see what her follicles look like. The way that she's sitting right now is actually perfect because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ultrasound right about here. Uh, usually about the halfway point to the lower third of her body is where those follicles are going to sit. So I'm going to change the camera angle here and show you guys the ultrasound screen, but that's where I'm going to be putting the uh, probe so you guys can see what it looks like inside of there. So I'm getting ready to check her out. This is the blank screen and this is the probe. So like I said, take some ultrasound gel and put it on pretty thoroughly. I mean, you're going to use a lot of it. It's going to get really, really messy. And you can also look behind my hands here how the screen has also gone completely gray. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to go ahead and put it on the side of the female. And right there, see these big oval spots? Those are her follicles. So what I can do is go ahead and freeze this. Go ahead and rewind it just a little bit. We'll get that follicle focused to as big as we can. So maybe about right there. There's a button here where I can measure distance and I get my little mouse pointer here and I measure it from one angle to the other. You guys have probably seen me do this in other videos. So from there to there, it's 24 millimeters. And I usually like to do it from a couple of different angles in case I'm not getting a straight shot at the follicle. So I'll measure from there to there, that's 22. Maybe from the far corner up, that's 23. So she's somewhere between the 23, 24 range. 
as you guys know from my prior videos, that's perfect. That is exactly prime where I want to get a male into her as soon as possible. So now that I know she's already cycling and her follicles are building and getting pretty big, I'm going to go ahead and get a male and throw him in with her. Why don't we take a look at another girl and see where we're at. So unfortunately, this next female that I'm about to ultrasound for you guys, I'm not going to show you. It's a pairing that I'm very excited about that I've kept a little bit of a secret for right now until I hopefully get babies. But what I will tell you is that the male's already been breeding her for about a month. So by ultrasounding her, I'll be able to see how much she's developed, how much bigger her follicles are, or if they are at all, and I'm wasting the male's energy for nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and put the probe here on her, and let's find those follicles. Now sometimes, even for the experienced person looking at this screen, as you can tell, all it looks like is a bunch of mush. So sometimes you have to use a couple of different attempts and try and really search around her body to find those follicles. So there they are. You can see a little circle there, circle there, a couple more here. So I'm going to go ahead and freeze that right there. That's a pretty good shot. So I'm going to measure this one right here. And from top to bottom, it is only 12 millimeters. So the reason that that's important is because my male's been breeding her for a month and she's only at 12 millimeters. Now, as you guys may know from my last videos, I don't even like to introduce a male until they're at least 16 to 20 millimeters. Uh, that's when they really begin their, their cycle and they ovulate around 40 to 45. So I've now wasted a month of my male's energy and she has not progressed at all because she is only 12 to 13 millimeters. So I've wasted a month of his energy for absolutely nothing. Um, Again, I like to throw the male in sometimes. Hopefully the male breeding her will get her to actually start developing those follicles. But in this case, it has not. A month's worth of energy has been wasted for nothing. Now, I normally don't like to bother ultrasounding females during breeding and bother them. However, I've been monitoring this pairing very closely. And I know that this male is an absolute stud. Uh, so as soon as I'm done doing whatever I want to do, he's going to go right back to work. And he's not going to waste any more time. So this is a pairing that's been breeding for about two, two and a half months or so. The last time that I recall, she's progressed pretty good. So I want to go ahead and put the ultrasound on her and show you guys what she looks like on the inside. So taking a look at this pairing, I've just moved the male out of the way so that I can uh, access her side a little bit. And right there, you can see those follicles right away. So I'm going to go ahead and freeze that. And just that quickly, I've ultrasounded her and not really bothered them all that much. So taking a look at this big follicle right in the middle, like I said, they've been breeding for about two, two and a half months, so she's pretty far along. She is at 37 millimeters, just based off of that one measurement. Now I could, I could measure this a couple other ways, but looking at it from the farthest points of that follicle is good enough for me for this one. It's 37.9 millimeters. So she's getting really close to ovulating. Ovulation happens anywhere between 40 to 46 millimeters. She's getting real close, so we'll be keeping an eye out for that to happen pretty soon. The last ultrasound that I'm going to show you guys today is a female that is already gravid. This girl ovulated on November 14th, and she's due March 14th, so she's a little over halfway there. She's got about two months left to go. As you can tell, she's not laying in the most normal fashion. She is one of the weirder females that I've ever had. She produced for me last year. She doesn't really... Uh, swell up very big with babies to the point that I even thought that she didn't have good babies in her at all until I put the ultrasound on her and I saw that there was not slugs in her which really surprised me but one very abnormal female and she's probably going to be the most difficult ultrasound of the day because she likes to take off running from me so I'm going to go ahead and put the ultrasound on her and let's see if we can see some babies inside so this video I'm not planning to freeze because we're not actually measuring follicles all I'm doing with this one is looking to see if there's going to be live babies if there is, you should be able to see the babies kicking around a little bit, maybe even see a heartbeat in there. Um, but there's really no reason for me to want to freeze this video. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on her. And right there, you can kind of already see a skeleton. You can see the circular motion right there. So we know that she's got good babies. I'm looking to see if I can notify, or, uh, find a heartbeat which it looks like right there. If you look real closely, you can see a little bit of a pulsing motion. That's going to be the heartbeat. So you can see how the, the baby is all coiled up inside of the embryo there, and she's got good babies. So there's no slugs coming from this girl. 
So that's it guys, that's how I use the ultrasound. Uh, as you can tell, there's a lot of different uses, a lot of different purposes for it. It's a nice tool to have, but it's not really gonna change anything in my season, uh, except for a little bit of knowledge and knowing more about my season. Obviously, it is beneficial to have with the one female that's not cycling at all, we saw that. I've wasted a month of his energy for nothing. I'm not gonna put him back in right away now because I know that she's not progressing. So I'm gonna give him some time off, some time to rest, a couple of meals. Maybe the same for her, I'll give her a couple of meals, mess with her humidity a little bit, and hopefully I can get her to cycle here pretty soon. Um, again, nothing is gonna replace the knowledge that you already have or the research or especially experience, but it is nice to have. Also, you wanna take a log of any uh, ultrasounding that you do. As you see on all of my cages, I've got post-it notes. That's how I keep track of all of my feedings and my ultrasound results. So if I ultrasound a female, I'll write down the date and what she measured at today. When I come back in a couple of weeks, I'll write it down again. So that way I can keep a running log and I can see exactly how well she's progressing. So that's it. That's all I've got for you guys on ultrasounds today. As, as always, if you have any questions, get a hold of me. Find me on Facebook. Whatever you need to do, more than happy to try to help. I hope this video was pretty cool, maybe a little bit educational. So get a hold of me with any more questions. I'll try to cover them, and I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. I can't